Tired of unwanted visitors in your backyard? Maybe you should add some garden lights. It's an unknown and completely made-up fact that most animals don't like garden lights. Besides, it makes the yard look pretty nice. But how to wire them up? If you've got existing garden lights, the best bet is to tap into the existing transformer that you've already got. Just take some landscaping wire and run it all the way to the backyard. But there's a problem. What if the transformer you're using is way at the front of your house and you need to run wires way, way to the back of your house? When you run a wire that long, you run the risk of dropping so much voltage along the length of the wire that you hardly have any power left at the end to run your lights. And that's no good. Well, I'll just have to look online for another transformer. Holy smokes, look at the prices. That's not gonna happen. I'll have to come up with another solution with just stuff I've got lying around. So what do you do? Ah, I'm gonna run a skinny little wire instead. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. How can a skinny wire be better than a thick wire? Well, I'm not gonna rely on the skinny wire to provide enough power. I just need the skinny wire to provide enough voltage to trigger a relay. And that relay can be used to trigger a second power supply, which I'm going to build up using an old PC power supply. I'm going to take an old PC power supply and put it in a large Tupperware container, along with my little relay circuit for turning it on and off. Here's the relay circuit taped onto the front of the power supply. Don't worry, it's not nearly as complicated as it looks. Here's everything you'll need to put together your relay circuit. First, you'll need a 12 volt DC relay a 220 microfarad 50 volt electrolytic capacitor and five diodes. I used 1N4007 diodes. I use these because that's what I happen to have, but you can use pretty much any diode in the 1N4001 series. Don't forget a relay is simply an electromagnetic coil of wire used to activate a set of contacts. We'll arrange the first four diodes in this diamond pattern. Next, we'll put this capacitor in place with its negative lead down towards the bottom of the diodes away from the white band. Finally, we'll wire it all up. All the leads along the top will be connected together and the same with the bottom. And we'll add some wires to the relay and the incoming voltage. And don't forget to solder it all together. Hopefully your solder connections look better than these ones. So what's going on here? Well, the voltage from the transformer comes in on the red wires. Now most transformers for your garden actually produce AC current, so it alternates back and forth between positive and negative. Since alternating current isn't particularly good for DC relays, the first four diodes act as a rectifier, taking all the negative bumps and making them positive too. Unfortunately, we still drop to zero volts between each bump, and the relay is probably not going to like that and might start buzzing loudly. So instead, our friend the capacitor acts as a filter to smooth those bumps out, so now we have an almost flat DC current. So now, when your other garden lights come on, the AC voltage also triggers the relay, which can be used to turn on the power supply and power all our other lights. But wait, what about this last fifth diode? Turns out, it's got a very special job. It protects the rest of the circuitry. When the power is removed and the relay shuts off, an interesting thing happens. The collapsing magnetic field in the coil actually creates a voltage spike in the opposite direction. Our little diode friend provides a safe path for that voltage spike to be shorted away. Otherwise, it could hit the electrolytic capacitor. And trust me, these kinds of capacitors do not like having reverse voltages applied to them. Okay, we've done some wiring outside. I've got a bunch of lights set up along the back fence. And that runs all the way on the side and up under the ground. And here we are. And I've run the skinny little wire all the way from the front of the house. On the back. just under the deck. So what's so great about using a PC power supply? Well, for starters, they're easy to turn on and off. In fact, most of them have a black and a green wire. All you gotta do is short them together, and that'll turn it on. And guess what? You're not switching line voltage, so it's way safer. Oh, you 
And remember those green wires coming off of the relay? We'll use those to connect to the black and green wires on the power supply to turn it on and off. And in case you were wondering, the black and brown wires are the ones that produce the 12 volts DC from the PC power supply. But hang on, the output is 12 volts DC, and garden transformers produce 12 volts AC. Is it going to matter? The short answer is no. A typical filament in an outdoor bulb really doesn't care if it's AC or DC, as long as there's enough current going through it to make it glow. And if you switch to LED lights, guess what? LEDs really only need DC current anyways. So what do they do? They put a rectifier circuit inside. Look, here's a couple of the diodes, and there's two more on the other side. Heck, they even included a capacitor. Look familiar? So, with our power supply safely tucked away in a Tupperware container so it's reasonably weatherproof, we can hook our skinny wire up to trigger the relay and use our brown and black wires to provide 12 volts into our lights. So, we'll slap the lid on the container and push it under the deck for maximum protection, then make sure that our power supply's power cord is plugged into a properly protected outdoor outlet. Then, we wait for dark and wait for the magic to happen. As expected, it works perfectly. 